Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about one of my favorite small cap stocks I'm looking at right now, Green Brick Partner. This is a home builder with just about a $1 billion market cap. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of stock analysis on this channel. So if you're into that kind of thing, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you can check out more videos like this one. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So Greenbrick Partners is a construction company and they've had an incredible return this year, by the way, of about 115% so far. They're priced at just about $23, but their earnings per share going forward are expected to be about $2.26, giving them a PE ratio of 10.63. Very attractive looking. One thing I like about the company is that their business is easy to understand. They're home builders. You can see their revenue is pretty evenly split between their southeast and central divisions, uh, you know, both in terms of America. So they're a U.S. company, 100%. So here's their balance sheet. They have very good solvency ratio here. Liabilities to assets, just 33% there. Quite healthy. Positive working capital. A current ratio of over 8.3. So that means that their current assets are 8.3 times what their current liabilities are. Very healthy. The one thing here that's very disconnected is that quick ratio of 0.77. So the quick ratio is your current assets minus your inventory divided by your current liabilities. So what this means is that even though the current ratio makes it look really healthy, they're actually in, in a little danger here if they can't sell their inventory. You know, once you take that inventory out, their current assets are only 77% of their current liabilities. They can't cover their current liabilities anymore. Let's look into that more. Okay, so I'm looking at their balance sheet for the past five years, and I'm looking specifically at their inventory here. And I do notice that inventory is going up over time. I also see the total assets are going up over time, but when you compare the two numbers, I think it becomes clear that inventory is becoming a larger and larger percentage of their total assets. This could be a concern. However, counterbalancing that, let's look at the days in inventory over the past 10 years or so. And when we do that, we see that their days in inventory has been trending downward. You can see that in 2017, their days in inventory was 487, whereas for the trailing 12-month period, it's about 382. Now, that's a lot of days in inventory, but that is the nature of the construction business. These are going to be high numbers, but I love to see them continue to trend downward, which makes me feel better about that quick ratio. Okay, so I'm looking at a DuPont analysis for the past five years. If you don't know what this is, I made a video on it It's in the description below. But essentially, we're looking at ROE, return on equity, very important measure of profitability, and we're just breaking it down into its three components. One of those components is net income margin. And I love to see that net income margin is going up over time. In the most recent period, we got a value of 10.5%, which means for every dollar of sales we generated, we were able to keep 10.5 cents of profits. I also see that asset turnover is going up. You know, for most businesses, you get one or the other, right? You don't get both numbers being good. But for this business, they're both increasing. That is tremendous. The value in the most recent year is 1.09. So for every dollar of assets they had, they were able to generate a dollar and nine cents of sales. And finally, the equity multiplier captures the effects of leverage. This company is not very highly leveraged. So you're not going to get a big multiplier there. That's fine. You end up with a return on equity, which is increasing over time, largely driven by that net income margin increase. And it's about 18.2% most recently. I love to see. That. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is use an intrinsic valuation model to come up with a value for Green Brick Partner Share. Because this is a young company, I'm not going to use a dividend discount model. They don't pay any dividends. I'm going to use a potential dividend discount model, aka the free cash flow to equity model. If you want to know more about it, check out my video on that in the description below. 
but essentially all we're going to do is we're going to make some assumptions. We have to assume what's their growth rate going to be over the next five years. After that, what's their perpetual growth rate going to be? You know, because companies can't grow forever. We're usually going to stop forecasting after five years. Hard to forecast beyond that anyhow. And then we have to assume some kind of discount rate. Now, given the look on the balance sheet, given the competitiveness of the industry, I'm going to go with a slightly higher discount rate than I normally would. Uh, at least 7%, I would say. Probably 8 And we're going to look at their past growth to estimate how much they're going to be growing over the next five years. We're going to put it all together. We're going to figure out what's the fair value for this stock. So as far as how much the company will be growing over the next five years, I'm quite optimistic. There's not many analysts following the company, but they do forecast tremendous growth coming up. And when you look at their most recent growth, that also gives you some optimism, especially because we're dealing with a $1 billion company. They have a lot of room to run. Not like some of these mega cap trillion dollar companies where you start to ask yourself, you know, how much more can they grow? They went from $59 million in net income all the way to $100 million just year over year. And so based on all of this, I'm going to be a little optimistic in my growth rate assumptions. So, okay, here is the result, guys. This is a valuation matrix where each cell represents the fair value of the stock under two different assumptions. One is what is the discount rate you want to use? The other is, what is the free cash flow to equity growth rate? And so that growth rate is just for the next five years. After that, I assume they grow 2%. Okay, so for example, this cell right here says that if they grow 28% over the next five years, and you're using an 8% discount rate, the stock would be worth about $35.58 today. Another way of looking at this whole thing is to say the following. Let's suppose that I want to get a 10% return on my investment, and I think the company will only grow at 20% per year for the next five years. Then that means I need to pay no more than $17.08 per share to buy the company. So which cells are most likely? I actually think these two columns on the right here are the most likely. I did put these over here just to show you what it's like under you know a little more pessimistic growth assumptions. You know, I'm definitely going to be using a discount rate that's a little higher. I think 8% is probably okay, 9%, something like that. If you look at the matrix below, that then tells you how good or bad of a deal it is relative to the stock price today. And when we look at that, if you, you know, if you follow my logic that they're going to have high growth, you know, it becomes a very good deal if you look at these two columns on the right. Even in the worst, you know, the worst case scenarios over here, it's not that terrible of a deal. You know, extremely high discount rate, low growth, you're still looking at a stock that's only about 27% overvalued. So taken together, it does look like a good deal. One last thing to consider is insider trading. This company doesn't really have a whole lot of insider trading. Uh, nothing going on the past three months. Uh, for the past 12 months, there were a lot of buys. Uh, a lot fewer cells. You know, if you scroll down here, you look at the number of shares involved, you can see quite a few more shares bought compared to shares sold there. Usually a good indication about the future. Now, I will say that the stock really, the price really went down earlier in the year. So that may have been when they bought. So, you know, when you factor that in, it's not really that positive of a signal. There's really not a whole lot of information here. Okay, so here are my final thoughts, guys. The insider trading data is pretty inconclusive. The balance sheet is pretty healthy. Uh, I really like this home building company. They're increasing their profit margin every year and their asset turnover. You normally don't see that. With just a $1 billion market cap, they had a, a lot of room to run. This stock could grow quite a bit. And I definitely like where the housing market's at right now. Now it is a smaller company. I definitely would not make a large investment in this company, but I am going to take some money. I'm going to make this part of my portfolio. So that's just my opinion. I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.